Okay, so in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at mean bond enthalpies. Now, hopefully we understand what enthalpy is now, okay? That's the change in energy uh, during a chemical reaction. And what we're doing here is we're looking at specific bonds. So what is a mean bond enthalpy? It's the average energy required or released when one mole of covalent bonds are broken or formed. Now, what I mean by this is that the average, well, that will come later. I'm going to explain why it's an average later, but it's energy required or released. Well, energy is required, I'll put that in blue there, to break bonds. So we need to put energy in, in order to break bonds. We can also say it's released because that's what happens when bonds form. Okay. So, you know, it's an either or, and they are equal and opposite. So what I mean by that is this. So when bonds are broken, it's an endothermic process. So what I mean by that is that delta H, the enthalpy change, is a positive value. And when bonds are formed, that's an exothermic process. So in other words, that is a negative delta H. So energy is released during that process. Now these processes for each type of bond are equal and opposite. So for example, a C to H covalent bond, so a carbon to hydrogen covalent bond has an enthalpy of 413 kilojoules per mole. Don't forget what's when one mole is broken or formed. Now, obviously to break one mole of these CH bonds, it's going to require 413 kilojoules per mole of energy. So that's going to be a positive value for delta H. But when these bonds form in the products, then they release that much energy. So it's equal and opposite. So that's what mean bond enthalpies are. And again, I haven't forgotten about the mean average thing. I'll talk to you about that in a second. So what we can do is we can use these mean bond enthalpies to find the delta H of a reaction. So Hess's law is one way of finding the enthalpy change of a reaction, but using mean bond enthalpies is another. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at a reaction and we're going to see if we can use these mean bond enthalpies to find the delta H. So what we've got here is a reaction between ethanol and oxygen. So basically the combustion of ethanol. And we're going to be producing carbon dioxide and water. So we've got this balanced equation here and all of them are gases. These mean bond enthalpies tend to be stated from the gaseous state. So what we're saying is when bonds are broken, it's an endothermic process. These here are actually covalent substances, of course. Okay, So any values that I use over here are going to be positive because it's an endothermic process. When we form new bonds in our new covalent substances, all our delta H's are going to be negative because this is an exothermic process. So you can see how it's a balance between these two that actually dictates what the overall enthalpy change for this reaction is. Okay, so let's take a look at the bonds. Now, what I recommend, if in doubt, draw it out. Okay, so if it's not already drawn for you in the exam question, then make sure you draw each of these molecules out showing all the covalent bonds. That is the only way you're going to get this right. Okay, so I'm just going to go ahead and do that now. So what we've got here is, of course, ethanol plus oxygen gives carbon dioxide and water. We've got one mole of ethanol. We've got three moles of oxygen gas, two moles of carbon dioxide gas and three moles of water present. So I've represented that with the appropriate number of molecules here. So we can see very clearly now each of these individual bonds that are involved in each of these molecules. Okay, and we need to take into account every single one of them. So what we're going to look at now is in an exam question, they give you the values of these different bond enthalpies. Okay, so I'm just going to write down the ones for our reactants over here. So we've got CH, CC, CO, OH and O double bond O taking into account all of these different bonds. 
Now, we not just need to take into account each single bond, but how many of them there are. That's why it's so important that you count up all these different bonds. And the way I do this, it's old school and it's you know, a little bit remedial, but you know, sometimes that can be a little bit special, is, is just cross these off as you add them up. So how many CH bonds have we actually got here? Well, if you look inside the molecule, we've got one, two, three, four, five. So that's times five. Okay, so we've got five CH bonds. CC, we've just got the one, so I'm gonna leave that like so. CO, just the one and uh, OH, yeah, just the one there as well. So all these three, I'm gonna leave just one. The O double bond O in pure oxygen, we've got one, two, three double bonds there, so that's times three. Now let's not forget that when we're breaking all of these bonds, we're putting energy in to do so. So what we need to do is make all of these positive values. So everything on the left-hand side is gonna be a positive value. So let's go ahead and uh, and add these up. So how much energy is it gonna to take to break all of these bonds? Well, I've got five uh, times 413 plus 348 plus 360 plus 463 plus three times 498, close brackets, and that should give us plus 4,730 kilojoules per mole. Okay, so that's how much energy it takes to break all those bonds. Now we're gonna do exactly the same thing over here. So we'll look at what bonds we've actually got. So all we've got over here are two types of bonds. We've got a C double bond O. Now we got four of these, there are two per molecule. So we've got one, two, three, four. So I'm gonna multiply that by four. And in our three molecules of water, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six OH bonds, okay? What we need to do is actually make sure these are negative numbers because this is an exothermic process. So I'm just gonna put big fat negatives in front of those two. So I've got actually a total amount of energy that's released when these bonds form. So we've got four times minus 743 close brackets plus six times minus 463 close brackets and that gives us minus 5750 kilojoules per mole so now we've got these two this is the energy we need to put in this is the energy that's uh, released when these new bonds form. So it's a balance between the two. Now, all we need to do is just add these two together, okay? So we've got 4,730 plus, of course, it's gonna be minus 5,750. And that gives us a delta H value for this reaction of minus 1,020 kilojoules per mole and that's our final answer here okay when you're doing these if in doubt draw it out okay so i'm just going to put that down the bottom here it's a balance between the energy you need to put in to break the bonds and the energy released when new bonds are formed now there's different ways of thinking about this some people will tell you oh don't forget that uh, you know it's uh, products minus reactants or reactants minus products guaranteed in an exam that you're going to get confused between that okay so if you just make sure you know to break a bond you put energy in these are positive when bonds are formed energy gets released so these are negative values and you just put the two numbers together okay it's nice and easy so it's a balance between the two and you get your uh, your overall. Now, I did say I was gonna come back to this average, okay? Now this mean bond length be their averages because if you just take a look at our OH bonds here, these OH bonds have the same mean bond length of course, 463. But in real life, the OH bond in an ethanol molecule will have a slightly different enthalpy to the OH bond in a water molecule. It'll be different again in a molecule of um, peroxide, for example, or a carboxylic acid, or any other molecule no H is in. They're all slightly different. That's why they're mean bond enthalpies. They're an average. So what happens is that these averages mean that these, okay, 
are not as accurate as using delta HF or delta HC values because they're specific to the compounds. These are not compound specific. They are means, they are averages, they are not as accurate, okay? So they do have slightly different values between molecules. So that's how you go about calculating a delta H using mean bond enthalpies. Just be aware there are some questions where they're asking you to find the bond, but give you this, so you need to do a bit of rearranging. But if you stick to these rules, you'll be absolutely fine.